This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over RH and compatibility. And this video is part of an NCLEX review series over maternity nursing. So let's get started. First let's start out talking about what is RH and compatibility. Well this is where you have a mother who is RH negative and she's carrying a baby that is RH positive. And what happens is usually at the end of the pregnancy whenever it's time to deliver the baby the blood from the baby will mix into mother's circulation and this will cause mom's body to create these antibodies because whenever this RH positive blood got into mama's system who's RH negative, the body sees that as like a foreign invader and it's like, oh, we've got to create these antibodies so next time we see this, we can attack. And that's just what it does during the second pregnancy whenever mom gets pregnant again and she carries an RH positive baby. So what happens, these antibodies get in there, they attack the baby, causing severe anemia, heart failure, and jaundice, which we're gonna be going in depth about the patho and what's happening to the child and the prevention and the nursing care here in a moment. But first, let's talk about red blood cells. Okay, in our blood typing video, we learned about the various blood types. You can have A, you can have B, you can have AB or O. And based on whatever type you are, let's say you're type A, you have A antigens on your red blood cell surface. If you're type B, you have B antigens on that surface, and then so forth. We also learn that on the red blood cell, a person can either have it or they don't, a special protein called RH factor. So if a person has these little special protein factors on here, what are they known as? They're known as RH positive, okay? But if they don't have these factors, they're absent on that red blood cell surface, they're known as RH negative. And that's what we're talking about here. Our mother doesn't have these proteins present on her red blood cell surface. And here's the thing, if you are RH positive, you can easily receive positive or neg negative factor blood without any problems, no antibodies being created. However, if you're RH negative, you can only receive other RH negative blood. You can't receive positive because if you did, you'll create these antibodies that will actually attack those red blood cells. And that is really what's going on here in this whole condition. So now let's talk about how this happens. Okay, we have a father. He is RH positive. So he has these proteins present on his red blood cell surface. Then we have a mother who is RH negative. She doesn't have these proteins. Now it's a really high probability that they're gonna have a baby that is RH positive. But let's say that they didn't. It was an RH negative baby. Everything's fine, because remember, mama can receive other RH negative blood into her system, but she can't receive positive RH factor blood in her system. Or let's say that the father was RH negative, mama's RH negative, that's fine. Or if father was RH negative and mama was RH positive, that's fine because like I said at the beginning of the lecture, mom can receive positive and negative blood. So if baby was negative, it would be okay. Now typically in the first pregnancy, the baby is not affected because this happens, these antibodies are created once that baby is delivered, when that placenta comes off of the wall, the blood from the baby will go into mama's circulation. The body will see that RH positive blood and say, uh-uh, we're not gonna have any of that. That's a foreign invader and creates these antibodies. So baby's gone by the time these antibodies are really formed and ready to attack if they see RH positive blood again. However, sometimes this can happen early on where baby's blood enters into mom's circulation. Like with a trauma, like abruptio placentae, where some of that Placenta has came off the uterine wall, either partially or totally. Baby's blood goes into mom's circulation. Antibodies are created. Baby's still in there and those antibodies can attack. Or like with an invasive procedure, like an amniocentesis or whatever the patient can have where the blood's gonna pass over. 
Now, the thing is, is whenever that happens, once that Rh positive blood gets into this mama's blood that's Rh negative, the mama has become sensitized to it. And as healthcare professionals, we want to prevent that, which is why it's important we give Rogam and we test the mama's blood type early on in those prenatal visits to see what she is, which we're gonna really jump into here in a moment. So now let's look at this second pregnancy. Okay, mom is now sensitized. She became sensitized over here in that first pregnancy. She has all these antibodies in her system that are on the lookout for red blood cells with positive RH factor because they seen them before and next time they see it, they're going to attack. So we have again our RH positive father, RH negative mother, real high probability they're gonna have another RH positive child, but by chance, if they have an RH negative child, this isn't gonna happen. It's just with the baby who's RH positive. So here we have these antibodies, and a neat thing that occurs during pregnancy naturally is called passive immunity. It's where mama is passing some of her antibodies that she's built up over the years to help that child survive once it's born from all the bacteria and viruses that are naturally in our environment. But also what's getting passed to this child are these antibodies that she created over here. And these antibodies, again, their goal is to attack red blood cells with RH factor that's on them. So it senses that, it sees these red blood cells and it's like foreign invader attack. So it's going to attack the baby's red blood cells. And whatever, whenever that happens, these red blood cells are gonna hemolysis, which is going to drop the count of red blood cells in the baby's body. Now, whenever that happens, what do red blood cells do? They help transport oxygen throughout the body, which this child really needs that. But that's not gonna really occur because we're losing the number of them because those antibodies are attacking those red blood cells. This is going to cause severe anemia in this child. Now when anemia happens, what organ is really going to be affected? That heart. Because the heart pumps blood throughout the body to get that oxygenated blood it just received from the lungs to the organs, to the tissues. And it's going to sense that those oxygen levels have dropped because there's no red blood cells to carry that oxygen. And so it's going to try to step up its game. It's going to pump harder. It's going to pump faster trying to get it there but it can only do this for so long and it starts to wear out. Whenever that happens, the baby will enter into heart failure. And when the heart muscles weak, can't pump, fluids start building up and we get a really big problem. So that's why you're gonna see edema swelling throughout. In addition, from where those red blood cells are breaking open, from where you have the breakdown of red blood cells, that's going to leak bilirubin into the blood and we don't want it there. And the liver can't even conjugate it fast enough because the liver and the spleen are busy trying to make more red blood cells and that's gonna overwork those organs. You're gonna get splenomegaly increase in the size of the spleen and hepatomegaly increase in the size of the liver. And these red blood cells that they're gonna produce really don't do much of anything. They're gonna be immature and they're too small to really help this child out. So the baby is going to experience jaundice because of all that bilirubin that's going to be in the blood. And bilirubin is really a neurotoxic agent. And it's not meant, like I said, to be in the blood and it can really affect the brain development of the baby. So the baby can have neuro issues as well if they have too much bilirubin in their system. So as the nurse, really the whole key in preventing this from happening is preventing this mom from becoming sensitized. We want to prevent that. So what do we do? Well, during that prenatal period, we're going to look at their blood type and look at their RH factor. And if they're A negative, B negative, AB negative, or O negative, they're going to receive a Rogam shot. And it's given IM intramuscularly, and the woman will receive it at 28 weeks and after delivery if her baby is indeed RH positive. They will test that and she'll need to get that other shot within 72 hours after delivery. And how does Rogam work? What does it do? Well, what it does is it stops the immune system from creating those antibodies. So when that blood from that RH positive baby enters into the circulation, this Rogam, which is already on board, will prevent that immune system from creating those antibodies. So mom's not going to become 
sensitize. Now, Rogam is not effective if mom's already been sensitized. She already has those antibodies present, so it won't really work. Now, it's really important that Rogam is given with each pregnancy to prevent mom from becoming sensitized. Okay, so that wraps up this lecture on RH incompatibility. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.